Asad and Anas meet up on a Saturday morning on the way to the boys' den. They were discussing what adventures they were planning on doing today. What shall we do today? said Asad. Fly into space in a rocket ship, and Anas replied. Drive fast cars on a racetrack, said Asad excitedly. They both looked at each other and after a pause, fight dragons, they said together. The fruity boys rush off to the den, stopping off at the shops to get supplies to make swords and shields. Once they arrive at their den, the fruity boys start to make haste with making their swords and shields for their adventures. They put on their knight costumes, their knight helmets, and were now fully ready and dressed up as knight heroes. Anas and Asad headed towards the light coming from the window and looked outside the window to see that they were no longer in the grove of trees where their den is hidden. They have traveled back to medieval times. They saw a large castle, and they were surprised to also see flying dragon fruits of different colors flying around in the sky. The fruity boys heard shouting and saw that the princess was being held captive in the tower by the dragon fruits. The whole of fruity world was in a panic and were afraid watching the dragon fruits fly menacingly around the sky. Whoa, look at that, Anas, said Asad a little scared, pointing to the large dragon fruits. King and Queen Plum was searching desperately to find somebody who will save Princess Plum from the tower and return her home safely to them. Many of the fruity knights had already tried and failed at rescuing Princess Plum from the dragon's tower. There's too many dragons, one knight tells the king. The king replied sadly, But my daughter is trapped inside the tower. How do we get her out? Just then, the king saw Anas and Asad walking through the courtyard. You knights, yes, you there. Anas and Asad look at each other, pointing to themselves. Yes, you two, the king replied again. Can you help save my daughter from the dragons and the tower? Anas, looking at his shiny sword and shield, answered, Yes, your majesty, we can help. We can rescue Princess Plum. How? whispered Asad. There are many dragons, and they are huge. Asad was very nervous. The king sighed with relief. The fruity boys took off in the direction of the tower, watching carefully with each step they took, looking high, looking low, looking to the left of them and the right. They cross a field and enter a dark forest. Anas, it is very dark in here, Asad said shakily. Suddenly, a large, bright light appeared, and in that light was a large, bright yellow dragon fruity. He landed on the ground with a thud just before the fruity boys. Trying to be brave and not show the dragon how scared he was feeling, Anas held up his sword and shield, walking towards the dragon fruity, thinking if he could just show some courage and talk to the dragon, then the dragon will let Princess Plum free. Anas, no come back, hissed Asad. We need to make a plan, whispered Asad, trying desperately to get Anas to come back. Asad, not wanting to be alone, took off in the same direction as Anas. Looking around his surroundings, Asad saw paths in between the trees going in different directions. Catching up with Anas, Asad asked, What's the plan? The yellow dragon fruit blowing out big puffs of smoke from his nose looks down at Anas and Asad and says in a loud, deep voice, Where do you two knights think you're going? We are going to rescue Princess Plum from the tower, replied Anas. Asad, still feeling frightened, looking out for the other dragon fruities, stood beside Anas, holding his sword and shield up high for protection. Yellow Dragon laughed at the Fruity Boys and said, No, I will not let you pass. <laughs> Anas looked at the dragon steadily and said, Please will you let us pass to rescue Princess Plum? Yellow Dragon started to laugh a small laugh that grew louder and louder. <laughs> Please, 
You said please. Do you think that would make me change my mind? He stopped laughing and looked straight at the fruity boys. No, huffed Yellow Dragon, which startled Assad, making him terrible with fright and dropped his shield. Seeing this, the dragon started again to laugh, but this time louder, because he knew the fruity boys were afraid of him, just like all the other knights who came before them. <laughs> Assad became very upset that the yellow dragon was laughing at them. Didn't your parents teach you that it's not very polite to laugh and scare people? said Assad. Picking up his sword and shield, he pointed his sword toward the yellow dragon. Didn't your parents not teach you any manners? said Assad, annoyed with the dragon. The dragon was very surprised that the fruity boys were standing up to him, while all the other knights seemed very afraid of him and ran off. Anas came up with a plan. Tapping Assad on the shoulder, Anas whispered, Let's pretend to retreat and take one of these paths. Let's see if any of these paths lead to the tower. Anas and Assad lowered their swords and shields and started to walk back to the edge of the forest. The large yellow dragon fruit started sniggering to himself, not knowing that Anas and Assad were conjuring up a secret plan. The Fruity Boys walked back to the king's castle. The king, seeing that the Fruity Boys came back empty-handed, became very disheartened. Anas and Assad stood in front of the king. Your majesty, said Anas. We came across a large yellow dragon, and he blocked the way for us to get to the tower. The king became even more sad at hearing this. We have a plan to get past the dragons, but we need more knights. More knights? questioned the king. Yes, your majesty, more knights, and we all need to dress the same, replied Annas. We saw small paths going in different directions through the woods, said Assad quickly. We can divide and conquer. Divide and conquer? the king asked, confused. Yes, your majesty, divide and conquer. We will confuse the dragons so they would not know who to follow. One of those paths must lead to the tower, and then we can rescue Princess Plum, said a knight. Send for the map keeper, yelled the king. Tell him I want the map of the woods. The map keeper came running in, holding some rolled up maps of the woods. Then, taking the maps and spreading them open on a large table, the king and knights look at the maps to see where the paths will take them. The fruity boys showed the king and the other knights where they encountered the yellow dragon fruity. There, that path, that's the path we cannot go down. It will lead us to the dragon's den, said a knight, pointing to a path on the left of the woods. The king, knights, Assad, and Anas all talked and decided which is the best way to trick the dragons and rescue the princess from the tower. All dressed in the same clothing, the knights, Assad, and Anas head off to the woods to rescue the princess. The fruity boys walked ahead of the other knights to distract the fruity dragons. Assad and Anas, holding their swords and shields high, approached the bright yellow dragon again, putting their plan into action. You two again, snarled the yellow dragon, huffing steam from his nose. What can I do for you now? asked the dragon. Anas replied, we wanted to ask you again to please let us pass so we can get Princess Plum from the tower. Puffing up his chest, the dragon fully puffed out and bellowed. I said no! Assad and Anas started walking backwards. The dragon again started to laugh. When the dragon took his eyes off the fruity boys, they hid while another two knights took their place and started walking down another path. The yellow dragon looked back and saw the knights and took off after them, but he couldn't find them. Then he saw them running down another path to the left of him, again making chase after the knights, but then they disappeared. Again the dragon saw knights running down the path behind him. Changing his direction to chase after those knights, the dragon started to chase them. Now, quickly, said Annas, the dragon is getting confused. Let's run to the tower. 
They ran to the tower as fast as they could, while the other knights were all keeping the yellow dragon distracted. Anas and Asad made it to the tower without the yellow dragon fruity seeing them. They made their way into the tower as fast as they could, checking all the rooms looking for the princess, and found her in a room at the very top of the tower. Princess Plum looked very happy to see the knights rescuing her. The three of them very quickly ran down the many stairs that were in the tower. Something caught Asad's eye as they ran past a window. Stopping to have a look, he saw that the other dragon fruities were flying towards them. Quick, we need to go! shouted Asad. There's more dragons coming! Running faster down the stairs and out of the tower, the fruities made their way through the forest and were heading back to the kingdom. Asad then stopped and waved a huge tall flag which was the signal for the other knights to retreat back to safety and back to the castle. The knights started to retreat two by two, making sure that the other dragons did not notice them. Asad, Anas, and the princess walked through the gates toward the castle. The king and queen, seeing their daughter running through the courtyard, jump up and start running towards her, scooping her up in a hug, thanking Asad and Anas for bringing their daughter back home safely. It was time for Asad and Anas to leave the royal family and make their way back to their den. Wow, that was some adventure! <laughs>